This is a rant audio against the so-called natural medicine garbage. If you're interested, keep listening. If not, don't. I have to talk a little bit about myself here to start off so you know where I'm coming from on it. On a personal level, for myself, I try to avoid drugs like the plague because I'm very susceptible to all of them. In other words, I won't take anything stronger than an aspirin. Okay? It's just because I'm real susceptible to everything. I'm allergic to everything. So I don't know how a given drug will interact with my allergies. Okay? And I'm reasonably healthy. So, you know, I don't care about that. I also, on a personal level, like happen to like the stuff that's nutritious. I just don't like the taste of junk food that much. Once in a while, I get a craving for hamburger and french fries. But I want to say the last time I had one was like two years ago. I just don't think that way. It's just not attractive to me. I'm, it's not that I'm a good person. You know, for being organic. I'm not even fond of organic, really. But I like, to me, celery and yogurt and tomatoes, Roma tomatoes in particular, you know, that kind of food, I enjoy it more, okay? So, on the one hand, what I'm because what I'm going to say is such a rant, um, on the one hand, you could say that I, for all my ranting I'm going to do, I sort of practice good health stuff okay but I don't practice it to be good I practice it because I enjoy the taste I prefer skim milk to fat milk always have since I was a kid okay I'm not big on a lot of the foods you know cakes and stuff like that that people like all right I, I get into binges you know for a couple of days where I like candy bars or ice cream You know, my big failing is peanut butter. But I'm really not that much of a, you know, into that kind of stuff. By the same token, I don't don't want medicine. You know, unless I have to. Okay? So, just so that you know, because what I'm going to say, it runs counter to my actual life. All right? There are way too many so-called Christians who are practicing murder in the name of natural medicine. And that's what's provoking this audio. Okay, I've run across it too many times and I'm going to have to take a stand on it. And if this goes against what you want, if you're one of these natural medicine fanatics, please desubscribe from me now. I want nothing to do with you. Now, I'm going to explain why so you understand. I know both sides of the fence here. Okay? First of all, in what I do for a living, I work with doctors and have worked with them for over 30 years. And unknown to the people who want to sell you this natural medicine garbage, most doctors already have been practicing a combination of traditional American doctoring, which uses the, you know, pharmaceutical drugs and all that, and what the so-called natural medicine people propose. I mean, this has been a feature of medicine by doctors traditionally for hundreds of years. I mean, and it's got its sordid history, too part of the so-called natural medicine phenomenon, which has always been garbage, always been quackery, goes back to the days when people thought that you had to put leeches on your skin to get rid of the humors that made you sick. And what it did, of course, is it infected you because leeches carry germs. And then there was bloodletting. And even as recently as the beginning of the 20th century, one of the Vanderbilts, 
uh, Cornelius Val- Vanderbilt's son. I forget his name right now. I think it's William Vanderbilt. He got he was blood he he had bloodletting in order to allegedly cure him, and of course it killed him eventually. In other words, in traditional medicine, there have been natural medicine pro- practices that go back to pagan times that were really bad all along. That's one reason why the Mosaic Law was written by God, which doesn't prescribe any of this nonsense. Okay? God had instituted a whole series of medical treatments for what was usually called leprosy, but it stood for a lot of different things, and mostly involved cleaning. Okay? Cleanliness was a vital part of the Mosaic Law. First of all, because it depicted the idea of you have to be clean before God. But more important, not more importantly, but as importantly, it was a way to be healthy. God knows what makes you sick and what makes you well. So contrary to pagan practices, God instituted a whole series of medical science in the Mosaic Law that he invested in the priests Okay, so that you went to the priest if you were sick. And there was a whole series of prescriptions for that. Okay, very much modern medical science owes a lot of its pharmacology to the Mosaic Law. That's why so many Jews are doctors. Okay, and rightly so. In contrast to pagan culture, which came up with a lot of these herbal remedies that didn't work, and some which did, all right, that are invested with their own religious significance. So you have to understand there's this dual stream of so-called natural medicine and, and modern, which is much more effective, modern medicine that has always pervaded doctoring. Always. Ancient doctors 2,000 years ago, there were quacks and there were good ones. Today, the same is true. All right? So just understand that's the history, the origin of medicine. So doctors today who are typically going to prescribe to you pharmaceutical drugs are very well aware of the so-called natural remedy options. And sometimes they, they prescribe them. It depends on what works for the patient. So the first fallacy about the so-called natural medicine crowd, who I'm so ashamed to call them Christians, it's not funny. The first lie that they tell you is that doctors are against natural medicine. That's not true. Doctors are smarter about natural medicine. And they do prescribe it at times when it suits the patient and they know which is which because they're trained in order to become a doctor you have like 13 years of training you have to go through first you go to college then you have med school then you have internship it's a rigorous thing and you spend a lot of sleepless nights and then you have to spend at least, I don't know, three, four years, depends on the state, working as a sort of intern in a hospital. And then if you got your specialty, you got more years of training after that. So by the time a doctor is practicing in his own name, he's got about 20 years of a mixture of training and experience under his belt. And in most states, at least in the United States, have pretty rigorous standards about about whether you can hang a shingle out, out on your door or not. That's why doctors are so expensive. Okay? And medical malpractice insurance costs $10,000 a month. Just the insurance premium. Okay? So that's why a doctor typically makes a half a million to a million dollars a year. It's rare that a doctor makes less than that. They deserve it. They spent 20 years just getting to the place where they could practice at all. 
So if you have your druthers between going to a licensed physician and a so-called natural medicine person, you go to the doctor if you don't want to die. And he will have experience about so-called natural medicine. He will know whether it really works or not. And chances are, honey, it doesn't work. I'm going to go through some of that. Look at my video's description. I've put links. You can Google on this. There is no excuse for you being a Christian and believing in that so-called natural medicine crap. None at all. The Mosaic Law didn't, uh, didn't author it, didn't practice it, actually had laws that went against it. And if you don't know that, then you don't know the Bible. And if you don't know the Bible on this, honey, then you have no right whatsoever to be telling anybody about anything about medicine, unless you too are a licensed physician. You understand me loud and clear? You can be responsible for people dying. And one of the links in the video description is a whole website that catalogs the numbers of people harmed or dying due to this so-called natural medicine garbage. I'm telling you, if you want to be punished by God, get into natural medicine. Now I'm going to present the flip side. There are also horror stories of people who over-medicated using pharmaceutical drugs. people who were wrongly treated due to pharmaceutical drugs. But it's not the fault of the drugs, it's the fault of the practitioner. In other words, on both sides of the fence, you're going to find horror stories. And I have some people in my family who represent both sides of this issue. I have people that I've known in my lifetime and close in my family who have been over-medicated on the traditional doctor pharmaceutical route and who got harmed by the so-called natural medicine thing. And one of them died. Okay? And uh, several of them were hurt. In addition to that, you can look on both sides of the fence, just Google, about all the horror stories. There are horror stories on both sides. It boils down to, Hi, you got something wrong with your body, but it's just like windows. You don't know where anything is. It could be a thousand different causes. Why windows crashed. Why your body isn't working. And you know what? People make mistakes in diagnosis. That's one reason why I try to avoid taking drugs or herbs. Herbs are drugs. Every drug that's pharmaceutical has its basis in some kind of plant. It has an organic origin. And then what basically the pharmaceutical companies figure out how to get rid of the bad parts of the plant that can kill you and try to make a, a synthetic version that won't kill you. That's why pharmaceutical drugs are so expensive. And they, too, have to undergo 20 years' worth of trials in the United States. Whereas your so-called herbal medicines don't undergo any kind of oversight. You're just living on hearsay. You get the, mo the point I'm trying to make? Anybody can make a mistake on either side of the fence. Every herb is a drug. Everything you put in your mouth is a chemical, is a drug. An apple that has never been sprayed with pesticides is still a drug. If you eat the seeds, for example, if you eat the seeds of an apricot, for example, the source of apricot seeds, the stuff that's in it, can kill you if you eat enough of it. If you eat the insides of the apricot seed, it can kill you. Drugs, powerful drugs, are made from the insides of apricot seeds. So everything you eat is a drug of some kind. And depending on your body's interaction with it, you can die or get sick. I'm allergic to practically everything on the planet. So I, be, I have to be, you know, judicious about what I eat. God preserves my life, so... 
You know, I just eat what's good for me, and if I'm alive tomorrow, well, it's because he says so. But I'm not going to sit there and not go to a doctor if I need to. You get the point? You can be misdiagnosed. Now, the chance of you being misdiagnosed by a licensed physician is far lower than the chance of you being misdiagnosed by some person who's alleging natural medicine who doesn't know the first thing about it, who lives on, you know, hearsay. Oh, millions of people have been cured by this anti-cancer natural medicine. Oh, really? Where's the proof? I can't believe Christians can be so damn dumb. If you spout that kind of stuff to people, you don't personally know that the information is accurate. And you are bearing false witness before God about what you claim works. What will God do to you? Do you ever think about that? I mean, the farthest I've ever gone in recommending so-called natural medicine is zinc. And I recommended it because a pharmacist told me about it. See, I told you, the two lines of natural versus traditional have always been in medicine. I learned about zinc from a pharmacist. Okay? I knew a guy that I, you know, used to see at, at a pharmacy... I don't mean a boyfriend, I mean a sort of colleague guy. He used to go there and shop at his drugstore. And we got to be friends, and I talked to him one day, and I shook his hand. He had a cold. The next day, this was 1989, the next day, he came. I, I got his cold. So I went back to him. He had told me about the zinc the day I shook his hand. So I went back to him to get the zinc, because he knew about my, you know, allergies and stuff and I was afraid to try any of the you know the the -the over-the-counter drugs even anything stronger than aspirin and he said well try this see if it works and he gave me 25 milligrams of zinc that you dissolved on your tongue and I thought to myself well it's zinc it's you know same it's a mineral that that you take in your vitamins and minerals I can take vitamins and minerals this ought to work and the next day well got to be four hours that day I was cured of the cold And I've been taking zinc ever since. It worked for me. It doesn't work for everybody like that. Every time, look, I haven't actually had a cold since. Every time I think I'm coming down with a cold, or my nose starts to feel bad, I dissolve 25 milligrams of chewable zinc on my tongue that I get at Walmart. Now, is it really doing that job, or is there something else in my body that makes me no longer susceptible to a cold, or does God just simply not want me to have a cold at that time? I don't remember having a cold since then. Now, if I were trying to sell you a natural remedy, that story would be pretty convincing, wouldn't it? Okay, but the truth is, it works for me. I can't tell you it works for everybody. It does so happen that AMA, American Medical Journal, back in 1995, did publish an article about this zinc thing and about it seems to have an efficacy about when you're coming down with a cold. And the story I told you about the pharmacist is true. Okay, but that's still an isolated set of cases. They did run clinical trials at AMA. I forget how long the study lasted. It was supposedly discovered... um, by a guy who gave his daughter, who had a cold, the chewable, you know, vitamin tablet that had that much zinc in it. And that's what turned him on to the, you know, the solution. I guess he was a pharmacologist or something. I don't, you know, he knew to start researching it. But you see, all of those are traditional medical channels. They're not the so-called natural herbal medical channels. These are people who put it through the trials. Even so, it's still anecdotal evidence. Because what worked for me and all those other people might not work for you. 
You need a doctor who knows your medical history and the quirks of your own body to be able to assess what might work for you. And God help you if you're allergic to zinc. Maybe you're allergic to zinc. Zinc is a mineral like anything else. It builds up. You see my point? Even something that's studied, even something that's investigated, even something that has a widespread acceptance as a natural remedy, even among the medical profession, it still might not be accurate for you. Okay. So, number one, the likelihood of you being misdiagnosed, because you can still be misdiagnosed, by a licensed physician is a lot lower than being so-called diagnosed by one of these so-called natural medicine people who do not have degrees, who go by hearsay. And honey, anything you take that you call an herb or natural is just as much a drug as anything you can buy from a pharmacy. And if you don't think so, you're kidding yourself and you're lying to yourself. And more importantly, you're lying to God. Because every so-called drug has its origin in something organic. Natural. That's how we learned about drugs. That's how people used so-called natural medicines for thousands of years. Because they are drugs. Heroin is designed from a poppy. Opium. Cocaine. Marijuana. Those are all plants in origin. They kill you. So you know what? If you're busy into that natural medicine thing... How do you know it's really going to work? You don't. Because you're not a doctor. You don't know the alternatives. And if you're busy telling people, don't go to a doctor, just treat it naturally with herbs, spit. You're spitting on Christ. You don't deserve to be called a Christian. I'm sorry. You're doing what God never did. God always sent the people who were sick to qualified priests that he trained. And yeah, at that time, they didn't know how to create synthetics. So yeah, they used natural products because, by the way, every drug derives from something natural. But they knew what they were doing. They were trained. They didn't live on gossip and hearsay. And those so-called natural met remedies, those guys are in it to make money. Don't you understand? It's a multi-billion dollar industry. All this fake curing you and helping you with vitamins. Should you take vitamins? Yeah. Physicians use them routinely. If you go and have surgery, honey... Guaranteed, one of the things that's going to be in the, that the anesthesiologist is going to do to you when he puts you under, is he's going to give you massive shots of B vitamins. That's going to be part of the mix. Because that helps you recover from the shock. Yeah, because B vitamins are a drug, just like everything else. He's also going to give you synthetics that are also derived from plants initially, but we isolated the components and made them synthetics. So you see, you're going to be getting you're going to be getting massive doses of drugs, natural and unnatural, vitamins and not. Vitamins in massive doses can kill you, like vitamin A for example. Vitamins in massive doses like vitamin B or vitamin C. Well, some say they work. Linus Pauling swore by massive doses of vitamin C. But they might not actually be effective. Or they might be effective only on some people because of the way their body chemistry interacts with the vitamins. 
I, in particular, my body chemistry reacts very strongly to massive doses of vitamins. I have to be very careful with that. But your results may vary. So there is no one size fits all. You can't walk around and say that if you take St. John's wort, it'll make you feel better. You don't know it might make the person die. So if you want to call yourself a Christian and not be ashamed of the judgment seat of Christ, get off your high horse about organic food and natural medicines. Because you actually don't know what works. And you're pretending that you do. So you're lying to God. Ananias did that. Sapphira did that. That's Acts 5. You're lying to God about what happens. And honey, you do that. And God's going to spank you big time. And no herbal remedy is going to cure you from that. There is one cure. The Bible says this cure works. 1 John 1 9. Admit your sin to God. If you're hyping natural medicines, that's just as much a, a, a scam. Is anything you want to claim about the pharmaceutical companies who aren't making any money on the drugs, you don't know their story. So if you want to make lies against the pharmaceutical companies and make lies that pretend that the natural medicine companies aren't making money hand over fist, fine, you go right ahead. You're lying to God and he'll start spanking you and the cure for that is 1 John 1 9 admit you sin by making up stories that you don't have any information about or you'll die the sin unto death 1 John 5 16 and 18 peace out